Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, and that's P A Y N E, just like the Eagles, but spelled Payne, P A Y N E, along with our chief investment officer, Bob Payne, and happens to be my father. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious February weekend? It's always glorious when you and I are on those airwaves talking finance. It doesn't get more exciting than that. Well, Ryan, I'm sitting here with my uh, sugar hangover from all the candy you sent me for Valentine's Day. So thank you very much. <laughs> nothing like sending your dad chocolate hearts on uh, Valentine's Day. There's nothing <laughs> weird about that, is there? <laughs> well, the only thing more weird than that, if it did come in the mail, mom would throw it out before you ever got a chance to eat one. <laughs> mom is very anti-sugar. That's, uh, that's, that's for sure. That's true. <laughs> well, we've but got a great sweet. show. She is sweet. Don't forget that. She is sweet. Yes. Yes. If mom, if you're listening, <laughs> the sweetest mother on <laughs> earth. Well, we've got a great show for you on this Valentine's weekend. Bob and I are going to discuss hard, cold cash or cold, hard Mm. cash. Yes, you should always have cash on hand, but when do you have too much cash on hand? What's the right amount of cash to have? Bob and I are going to figure out exactly how much money you should have in cash and how much you should actually have invested. Find the right balance. We're going to talk about financial planning in the movies. In honor of the Sunday's 92nd Academy Awards, we're going to discuss some famous quotes and how you can apply them to your financial plan, along with this week's financial propaganda. That's where Bob and I basically read all the financial news, and we find out the best advice, worst advice, the financial media has lately been broadcasting, so you can get the right information. Along with this week's financial spotlight, we have our financial advisor, Courtney C. Money Dominguez on the show. She's going to break down a real retirement plan for you. So a lot of great stuff. Let's hop to it. Bob, you know, it's always good to have a healthy amount of money in your bank account. What we find is when you get to a certain point, it becomes prohibitive to have too much cash. What's the right amount of cash you should be having in your savings account versus being invested? Well, you know what, Ryan? You hit the nail on the head. This is a huge issue because there is more cash on the sidelines than ever in the history of the country. Yeah, and we see it every week when you come into our office. A lot of times you're sitting with 100000 500000 sitting in cash, literally earning no interest. And when we start to run those retirement numbers for you, you're actually losing money, and that can be a real detriment to your retirement. Well, it's a big detriment because you feel safe, right? I mean, it's this old passbook mentality. You know, back in the day when the banks handled most of the cash, you'd get your passbook. They would actually pencil in your balance, which I always found interesting. But you felt secure because yeah, I made a little bit of money. I can't lose money. You know, it makes people feel comfortable, but there's a big ingredient that they're missing, Ryan. What is that? Well, you need to compound and grow your money because the problem is cost of living is going higher. We use the stat all the time. Every million dollars you have today is worth about a half a million dollars every 20 years. And every day you're sitting in cash, not earning enough interest, you're losing against the purchasing power of money. And that can have a huge negative impact on your retirement. Yeah, it's that hidden insidious tax inflation, right? That just eats away at your buying power. And, you know, the price of everything keeps going up. You know, and I, I remember I used to send letters to your mom from college and put a four cent stamp on there. Now it's like, gosh, knows. I don't even know how much a stamp is now. It's got to be at least 50 cents. <laughs> when was the last time you wrote a letter? <laughs> That's got to be at least. Well, you know, thank there. you. Thank you for the Internet. I can tap them out all the time. But, uh, you know, handwritten letters, not too often. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the other crazy thing. And look, you know, we always say rule of thumb is have at least six months worth of expenses sitting in cash. Mm-hmm. And then you can maybe add a little more onto that if you're really, really nervous about expenses or maybe go a little bit less if you want to be more aggressive. But once you start to exceed that, that's where it really becomes detrimental. Because Bob, last time I looked, getting 2% on your savings account, that sucks. Excuse my language. Not even that, Rob. We just reviewed a, a new case the other day. And they had accounts at Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch and all these other wirehouse brokerage firms. They were getting 14 basis points, less than two tenths of 1% on yeah. their cash. I mean, it's just, it's, it's highway robbery. And you know what the insult to injury is? You still have to pay taxes on that. So even if you're getting one of those <laughs> high, I don't know, money market funds at 2%, well, you have to pay taxes on it, which means it's right. less than 2%. Yet the cost mm-hmm. of living has been going up by 2% a year. You're losing money and you don't even know it. And then the other problem I see is that a lot of you have these accounts spread all over the place. And I mean, you know, we're all taught, right, from birth, diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, what I find is people come in with like a dozen baskets and every one of those accounts has more money in cash than they realize. So the compound and penalty of that is just huge 
as you look out over the longer term. Yeah. I mean, one of the best exercises you can do when we do this for our financial master plan is take every single account you own, break it down by what's in cash, what's in stocks, what's in bonds. And you'll find when you add up all the cash and all the different accounts, a lot of times you can have like $500,000 earning like nothing. And that's not really helping you to get to your goals. Absolutely not. You know, and a lot of you like, a lot of you are just like all the clients that I work with now, you end up making a big purchase or, you know, it might be a new home or a new business or something. And, and the last person you tell is the person who handles your money. So we get these calls out of the blue, right? Hey, Rye, can you uh, get 500000 into my checking account tomorrow? Well, the nice thing is when you have all your money consolidated, right, you have, you have lots of flexibility. There's liquidity. You can borrow very cheaply for a short period of time. You have someone who can take care of these issues who knows who you are and knows what you're about. And then also, just by getting all your money to work, the thing I love to run is show you how much income do all your portfolios generate today. You probably can't answer that question. But by consolidating and getting everything invested properly, a lot of times you can see your income boost by like twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year just making sure it's all working. And that's significant cash flow you could have in retirement that you don't have to worry about the ups and downs of the market. And to me, like that's the place you want to be as you get close to retirement and then finally into retirement. You know, I was out late last night meeting with a client doing their annual review and we were going through the wealth projection, which, you know, really just shows you how much your money will compound, you know, net of that insidious, insidious hidden tax inflation. And, you know, the, the, the response is no way, Bob, no, no way can we have that much money. No way can that be. Yeah. And I, you know, I like to say at these meetings, way. <laughs> way, man. <laughs> yeah, way. <laughs> <laughs> way, dude. It's just a miracle. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. It's a, there's a certain therapeutic nature in just knowing what you own, why you own it, what income you're generating, and how you can fill in that income gap for retirement. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, like, this is the review I need. I have a collection of investments. I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, if you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring those statements in, bring them in for January. I'm sure they're in by now. Put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that information and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life. And then we can run the analytics and look at all the critical components. Everything from income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan for retirement? We're going to show you how to increase the income on your portfolio so you can fill in that income gap for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. If the market goes down big tomorrow, are you protected? What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to protect or bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio. You don't know you're paying a lot of those annuities, life insurance products, mutual funds from brokerage firms. We're going to show you how to reduce all the hidden costs on your portfolio, then optimize it for taxes so there's more money in your pocket. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply just call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over 500000 for your retirement. My son, Ryan, and I will create for you your own personal total financial masterpiece. There's no obligation. There's no cost. No strings attached, but there's no plan unless you text or call right now. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or all you have to do is just call 844-PLAN-NYC. 844-PLAN-NYC. This is Bob Payne, and I'm hanging out with my son, Rye Payne, today. We're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio.
It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And of course, that's P A Y N E. And Bob and I, as you know by now, are very simple men. And we like to keep it simple for you, just giving you common sense, practical advice you can use with your planning and investing. That's why we put together our newest guide. Five Ways to Save on Taxes in 2020. We'll give you all the highlights from the new Secure Act. There's a lot of new ways for you to save on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year, but we also give you all the highlights from the new Secure Act. So there's a lot of new ways to save on taxes, so you can optimize in 2020. Money saved in taxes, just as green as any money can make invest it. Download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, in honor of this past Sunday's 92nd Oscars, which I actually didn't watch, but I thought it would be cool if we could take some famous quotes and we could put them into financial context for our listeners and see you know, what we can come up with. And one quote that is very famous I'll be back. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator 2, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. How can we correlate that to our financial life? Well, first of all, Ry, uh, I know you didn't watch the Oscars, and I didn't either. And it's not because I don't like the Oscars. It's just that I can't stay up that late. I mean, <laughs> I don't get into a good award until I'm already getting up, ready to go to work. <laughs> it is a very late show. I agree. Um, and I guess they could maybe capture some more of the baby boomer dem- demographic like yourself, Bob. They just start a little bit earlier. Yeah, I think two o'clock in the afternoon would be just about perfect. But anyway, I digress. I want to get back to your quote about Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator. I'll be back. Well, when I think about that in the stock market, I'm thinking bear market, Rye. You know what? My uh, mentor back at Merrill Lynch, Bob Farrell, always told me all markets, all markets revert to the mean. And what does that mean? Right. This is a fancy way of saying that everything goes back to the average. And we've had above average returns in the stock market now for a decade. So that means at some point... Market is going to probably go down. So the average comes back in line with what is normal historically. So yeah, you've always got to be prepared for a bear market. And unfortunately, Bob, that crystal ball I had broke like 19 years ago. So I can't tell you when the next bear market's going to be. Sorry. Yeah, I think you're right, right? I think the only way, it's like the easiest way to think about it is like a rubber band. You can only stretch a rubber band so far, and then it's got to come back to normal. But the nice thing is, you know, all bear markets in history, I mean, all of them, including the great crash of 29 were temporary drops. There were corrections in the market. The ups are always permanent. Yeah. But the thing is, you always want to be prepared. You don't get prepared right before. And that's what we always talk about, putting your portfolio under the stress test. And we run Mm -hmm. that for all the portfolios that come into here is we look at and we look back and say, hey, what would your portfolio have done back in 2008 when the market went down? And a lot of times it's disconcerting. You might have been down 50% based on how your portfolio is allocated today do you really want to go through that again? That's what you have to ask yourself. Hey, let's just be true to ourselves, Rye. The more the market goes up, the braver we are, right? The further we get away from 2008, 2009, the less real it feels. That's why a balanced approach makes sense. It's, I don't care how you know stride you're going to be in your views. If you don't have safe investments like bonds in your portfolio when the market does ultimately correct or go into a bear market, where are you going to get the buying power to take advantage of those bargains like we did in 2009? Yeah, but it's worse than that because you probably have no idea what your allocation is right now between risk and safe assets. And that, to okay. me, is ground level one, like you, or zero, rather. That's what you need to figure out first, and you probably don't even know that. That's, it's huge. Yeah, you know, Rye, there are some um, pretty negative reactions when we show someone, here's what it looks like if you lose half, and that's what happened in 0809. Suddenly, we start to get a little more aware. Yeah, anyway, I think ahead. Arnold's right, Rye. Bear will be back. We just don't know when. Well, in honor of Judy Garland and Renee Zegwiger, who apparently won Best Actress for playing Judy Garland, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. How can we correlate that to our financial planning, Bob? Well, I thought Renee looked pretty good. Uh, you know, she had a little work done. You think, Brian, I could benefit from a little plastic surgery? You think I could I get help? I say, Bob, I think if you just a little tuck around the eyes there, would just do wonders for you. <laughs> well, actually, I don't want to look like Judy Garland, so, uh, you know, let's, let's just go somewhere else. But now, here's the thing. Once you're in retirement... You know, you're not in Kansas anymore. All of a sudden, you have that income gap that you always tell me about. Yes. It's a very daunting thing to go from having wealth creation where you have a paycheck coming in month after month, and then all of a sudden, that's going to shut off, 
and somehow you have to live off your portfolio, this is a huge transition. Can't stress that enough. Yeah, so don't think about your portfolio as, oh, it has to go up every month in value. I want to buy low, sell high. What you really want to do is, is it going to generate enough income? Do I have enough income that I can get money coming out of my portfolio, deposit it directly into my checking account every month so I can play golf, go fishing, take Zomba lessons or Zumba lessons, whatever they're called, and have fun in retirement, not worry about where my income's coming from. Exactly. And that's just like a simple analysis to do. And I think that's what we get nervous about is, ah, I don't want to sit down. I don't want to look at my finances. I know I have all these different things. But the good news is you're probably in better shape than you think. And I'd say most listeners that come into the office find that out. The bad news is your portfolio strategy probably isn't the right one, given what you're trying to accomplish. And if you're getting close to retirement or retirement, it's about safety and income. It's that number one maxim, you know, in my uh, in my four P strategy. The number one P is every one of you are taking way more risk in your portfolio than necessary. And that's great news because you can reduce that risk, increase the income, and have more fun. Okay, Bob, and I know you're going to appreciate this quote, Bob. But you can't handle the truth. What movie? Who said it? And rumor has it, you and Mom were actually at the movie premiere. Well, we sure were. Right with Jack Nicholson, I stood right next to him at the candy short? counter. In the movie theater, I stood right next to him at the candy counter, and uh, we saw a few good men, thanks uh, to a good friend of mine whose brother happened to work for Castle Rock Entertainment, and uh, it was a great movie. I love it to this day, but not as much as your mom does, uh, that, truth be told. <laughs> that picture next to Tom Cruise, I feel like you're all sitting, standing there, and mom's a little closer to Tom Cruise than you, just saying. So. Well, the nice thing was, I'm a lot taller. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, how can we correlate that to our retirement plan, right? I can't handle the truth. To me, that says... You don't really know what you own, why you own it. You don't know what fees you're paying. And that's a very daunting place to be. And it's not a lot of fun to find these things out. You know, Ry, how many of you have friends, family, moms and dads who say, well, I didn't get a checkup this year because I might find out I'm sick? Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Like I was just saying, most of the time, you're probably in better shape than you think for retirement. But the problem is the strategy and the things that you own probably need to be fixed. Well, you know, I blame our industry for that because, you know, you go into these big fancy offices with the wood paneling and <laughs> uh, everybody's all dressed up like they're going to a wedding and you sit down and then you make you feel dumb. You know, they, they make you, you know, you're embarrassed that you don't understand what they know and they use terms that are way above your head. Yeah, you know, this should be something that's easy and fun. And I don't care that you don't know what you you know what you own. You don't know why you own it. You need to find out. And it should be a good experience, don't you think? Yeah, no, everything when it comes to your investment portfolio should be intuitive. It should be common sense. And when it gets away from that, it's not you that's too slow that they can't comprehend it. It's the fact that the person telling you or explaining this to you is not doing a good job. That's their problem, not yours. You know, Ry, you couldn't be more right. You know, the dean of common sense always comes through in these calls and you know, if you're all thinking to yourself right now, you know what? He's right. I need to be financially healthy. I don't care that I don't know what I own. I'm not sure I understand why I own it. But if Bob's right, if I'm taking more risk in my portfolio, well, darn it, I want to know. And I want to get it fixed. So here's your chance. Give us a call. All you have to do is be one of our next few callers and have saved at least 500000 for retirement. Because if you have, here's your lucky day. Ryan and I are going to create for you your own 360 financial portal. Think about this. It's just like a financial GPS. No different than the one that's in your car, your truck that you're driving right now, which will tell you where you are financially. More importantly, it'll map out where you're going and report daily on your progress on your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and create the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It'll put your financial life on autopilot and help you to eliminate and to avoid those financial potholes that you know, somehow the financial industry forgets to tell you about. Lastly, it's going to update your net worth on a daily basis, and you can drop in to see how you're doing when you feel like it, so you'll always know where you are, and more importantly, where you're going. In addition, you know, Ryan and I have a program where we can sit down and take all those statements, you know, every single one, I don't care if it's a 401k, IRA, joint account, single account, an annuity, we're going to take all that information, and we're going to break it down into very simple, easy to read, apples to apples comparison, so you're going to know what you own, more importantly, You'll understand why you own it. And we're going to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you truly diversified? Do you have asset classes that go up when others go down? Do you have enough income in your portfolio to fill that income gap once you're in retirement? And you know what? Those costs, those fees, Ryan tells us every week, they're hidden. 
They're hidden for a reason. They don't want you to know what you're paying. We want you to know. We want you to eliminate those hidden costs so you can compound that money and have the financial independence we all deserve. And lastly, Ryan and I are going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. Can you believe it? For over four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have 10 slots. If you have over $500,000 safe for retirement, call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion. Just make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. And Bob, man, the article has been flying back and forth. You and I, I think we've literally read everything this week. I'm actually tired of reading from all the articles that uh, you sent me in my inbox the other day. I was going to cry and I was like, I got to read them all because we got to have stuff ready for the radio. But what did you find this week? You found some really good content, some great stuff we can talk about. So why don't I give you the floor? Well, Ryan, I'll tell you, once in a while you see a good article, you know, as opposed to, you know, all the fear mongering that goes on in financial media. This article is entitled Five Terrible Money Mistakes That Will Wreck Your Retirement. It sounds and, awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, they were excellent ideas, Ryan, very excellent ideas, because you know what? Money mistakes are like termites. Yeah. Actually, why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it well, sounds it great, but what's the... Well, you know, when you have a termite, they're in the walls. You can't see them. They're gnawing away, you know, at the foundation of your home. Well, it does the same thing. It gnaws away at your health. So there's some really good advice in this column. The first thing they said is that the number one mistake most of you make is you're flying blind, right? You're just winging it. You're not, you don't have yes. a plan. You don't have a strategy. You don't know where you are. You don't know where you're going. And it makes it a very scary proposition. I mean, we, we, this, I think this is kind of a the theme of the show today. It's just like, it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> just sit down. Yep. A firm like ours can walk you through the process and just start looking at those important analytics. Like, are you retired now? When are you going to retire? What income are you going to need? Someone can walk you through that whole process. But once you have that clarity, man, everything kind of just flows from that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, right? It's so true. And, I, and the second point they made was, you know, saving less than 15% of your income is a gigantic mistake. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, you know, I make a lot of money. I don't need to worry about savings. But, you know, Ryan, I was playing golf this week with a client. Can you believe that? I was out playing golf this week. <laughs> I'm glad I can help fund that, Bob. That's my uh, my joy in life. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a, not only a client, but a great friend. And uh, I started with he and his partner almost 40 years ago. Now, wow. this client got an enormous amount of money because he was a great saver, followed our strategy to the T. Meanwhile, his former partner... Right. They own seven companies. He's now in his mid 70s and he's still working, not because he wants to, because he has to. He never saved a penny. You know, we see that all the time in terms of just not putting the money away. And, you know, a lot of lawyers, I hate to call lawyers out here, can be guilty of this. A lot of lawyers make these big incomes, but man, they have the lifestyle to go with it a lot of times at these big, higher powered firms here we see in the city. And I remember sitting down with a lawyer a couple of years ago who was making like a million dollars a year. He had no savings. He's like between the three private schools, the country club. You have to sit down and you have to figure out what that savings number is because, yeah, even if you are making a lot of money, you might not be saving enough, which is crazy. You know, Steve Jobs said in his uh, farewell letter right before he passed away, you know, a watch that costs $300 tells the same time as a watch that costs $30. <laughs> you know, you can really enjoy your life. You don't have to have a... You know, you have to live the high life. You can live a good life. But, you know, later on, Ryan, we're going to do a case today that, you know, this article really spoke to because one of the things, the number five, the worst mistake you can make is assuming 
that you're going to be able to stay in that job forever, that you'll be able to work forever so you don't have to worry about planning. And I hate to use the word retirement because retirement says that you have to stop working at this date. Well, if you want to keep working, great. But I had a client in here the other day that said the same thing. Let's just come up with your financial independence number, meaning it's kind of nice to know you don't have to work even if you want to at a certain point. To your point, Bob, if you get downsized, something else happens, well, if you already have the money put away and your plan's in place, you're going to be a lot better shape than trying to wing it at that point. Yeah, right. I have one of my best clients. He's a top physician back in Pennsylvania. And whenever I would say retirement, he goes ballistic. Retire? Why would I retire? You know, I worked all these years. I know all this stuff. Why would I retire? And I went, I'm sorry. Let's focus on your financial independence. Okay, good. Let's go. <laughs> it, it, it's all about branding and marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all about the way you say things in life. Well, Bob, I found, actually, you and I found the same article this week. Uh, there was a really good one on taxes and just some of the pro moves you can make now, especially in light of the new SECURE Act. And you know, one thing to consider right now is we have this huge exemption, meaning you can move 11.6 million out of your estate tax-free, which most of us are probably saying, well, I don't have that much money, which is great. You don't have to pay taxes on it. But in 2026, it's going to revert back to 5 million, which means probably now is a good time to do some aggressive gifting because you're not going to have the same window later, depending on what happens with the Congress. And the government. Yeah, yeah, the one thing that's never permanent is the estate tax. I mean, it just seems that it changes every year of my life. And right now, you do have a big exemption. It, it's it's something you should take advantage of. You, if you have a big estate, you start gifting some of that money to your children and grandchildren. You can also give fifteen thousand per person. So your you and your spouse can give thirty thousand, and it doesn't have to be a family member. You can give it to a lot of different organizations, different people. Yeah. So if there's no better time to do some gifting, especially to your point right now, if you're trying to get money out of your estate, that window is going to get smaller later. So start moving on it. Another one I really like is you can donate appreciated stock and securities. You know, as a taxpayer, you get a charitable deduction from it and you get the fair market value of those securities into the actual charity, but you completely get rid of the capital gain. You don't have to worry about it and the charity doesn't have to worry about it either, which is just a great place to, to make charitable contributions in your portfolio. No, you're so right, Why? I mean, if you're just throwing darts at the board for the last 10 years, you've got big capital gains in your portfolio. It drives me nuts when I find out somebody wrote a check to a charity where you could gift the number of shares and they're happy to get it. They don't care if it comes in shares or it comes in a bond or it comes in cash, right? Because they have, they're set up to take care of that. So if you have charitable contribution, you're charitably inclined, you know, be smart about how you give the money and, uh, you know, take your most appreciated assets, usually one that's due for a correction anyway. Yeah. And on top of that, talking about charities, you can also, after 70 and a half, you can make donations out of your IRA directly. So instead of paying taxes on that money when it comes out of your retirement account, that money comes off the top of your income, which is another huge advantage. And even if you're not going to take money out of your retirement account until 72, at 70 and a half, you can still get that charitable deduction by getting that money out of your IRA early. Yeah, I think there's some confusion on that item too, right? Because a lot of us do give money to charity. I know I give a lot of money to charity. I know you do. And we think, well, I just write a check. You know, that's just as good. But it's not because, you know, you can't deduct as much as you, you could in the past. So if you're seven and yes. a half and you're charitable and inclined, don't write that check. Use that qualified charitable distribution, which the IRS is allowing, at least for another year. Bob, these are just the kind of pro moves that you need to be thinking about when it comes to your portfolio. And you're thinking to yourself right now, like, I need to figure out what I can do from a tax perspective. I don't want to make some of these mistakes. I don't want those termites within my financial plan. Well, here's your shot to get that second opinion. We still have six slots left. If you're one of the next six callers, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. All you need to do is bring those statements in. Bring in January statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that information and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal so we can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life and then we can start making some good decisions. We're going to look at everything from income. Income is so critical in retirement and more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan? We're going to show you how to optimize, increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap. We're going to look at diversification the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? What hidden risks or termites do you have in your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to protect and bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying, especially those insurance products, annuities, mutual funds. 
We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are, how to reduce those costs, and we're going to look at tax optimization. As you can see, there's a lot of things you can be doing from a tax perspective. You're probably not doing it, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next three callers, you've saved over $500,000 for retirement. Brian and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. There's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or all you have to do is simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. So this is Bob Payne, and I'm sitting here with my son, Rye, and we're the Paynes of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, as always, want to make sure that every week you're just getting common sense, practical advice for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our newest guide for this year. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020, but more importantly, give you the update on the SECURE Act. There's a lot of new tax benefits you can take advantage of. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020, and we give you the highlights of the new SECURE Act, which is a lot of new ways to save on taxes. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. We profess it every week, and you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, yes, we're on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can get old episodes of the show. You can subscribe to the show in a podcast format. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but you got to check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and you can see Bob's hair and all the other things that we do at Pain Capital Management. And you can catch myself, other advisors at Pain Capital Management on all the major networks every week, everything from Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, giving you our latest thoughts on the economy and the market. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, we actually answer all your questions directly. Simply email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I actually answer all your questions directly. And it's a really good question. We like to answer it right here on the show. And to help with questions today, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, to help with questions. Dan, how you doing, brother? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I'm doing well. I had a pretty uneventful Valentine's Day, or as I like to say, Singles Awareness Day. But (laughs) on the plus side, uh, candy is cheap now. So... I got that going for me, at least. There you go. For now, for all, for all your dating, you know, you can just give them the, uh, I guess, the after Valentine's candy. I have a feeling that's not going to work out well, though. <laughs> I think that's bad. That's bad advice. <laughs> that's we, something I never heard about. Uh, why people would be grateful for lovers, right? That they get cheap candy after Valentine's Day. <laughs> that's a first. <laughs> well, we got some great questions on the mailbag today. Our first one comes to us from Charles on Lloyd's Neck, Long Island. Charles says, Bob, at the age of 79, after being retired for 10 years, I think I finally have peace of mind about our financial situation, and I don't worry about us running out of money anymore. But now I'm thinking that we're going to have a million or more that we never spend, and we don't have any kids to pass it on to. Should I just start spending as much as I can to make up for the last 10 years of pinching pennies? I have regrets about not traveling more than we did in the last decade. Hey, Ryan, does this sound like uh, the same situation we deal with almost on a daily basis? You know, um, do I have enough money? Do I have more than enough money? You know, why do people wonder when they can know? Yeah, I know exactly. And I always say, look, let's not start with just what you need. Let's start with aspirational because a lot of times what I'll find is I met with a couple the other week. They actually want to spend more money in retirement because they've been really tight with the purse strings their whole life. And like, man, we've been saving up so we can really travel and do a lot of fun things. So I always say your baseline is let's start with adding all the fun stuff in there. Let's not just add that on later. Let's start there. 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you could do these projections and see what if, what if I spend X amount of dollars every year on traveling? What's that impact, you know, on my portfolio or how much do I have left? Will I run out of money? I mean, look, the most motivating fear in the world is running out of money. I mean, right. Yes. How many times have people sit down and say, I don't want to be a bag lady. I don't want to be a Wall, you know, Walmart greeter. Make sure I don't run out of money. And, you know, a lot of that is just out of ignorance. Um, and I don't mean that, you know, in a, an obnoxious way, but it, I yeah, mean, in the sense knowing. that. Yeah, you just need to know, you know, and it's like it's not as bad as you think. You know, a, a visit to the financial advisor is not like going to get a hysterectomy, you know, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. It's not. Yeah, it's not like going to the dentist, Ryan. Right? You know, I think that's the thing. It's like I find that as we get older, and I am getting older, you know, we become more insecure about our future. We think that, you know, no matter how much money we have, it may not be enough. And sometimes it's, it really hurts me to see that you're not enjoying your life because you don't know because that fear that you may run out of money is so overwhelming, you know, that, that it precludes you from really having a great life and a great life that you can live. Yeah. And you know what? Don't feel bad about it because I mean, look, I have friends that have millions of dollars and they still feel the same way. You know, I have one friend who's very, very wealthy and it never is going to feel like enough, but you can certainly bring yourself to a point where you feel a lot more comfortable than being in the dark. Well, you know, Charles, you don't have any children, but I do. So come on in. Well, I'll show you how to set up a gifting program. Thank you, Charles, for writing in. Our next question comes to us from Ruth in Princeton, New Jersey. Ruth says, Ryan, I've been approached about buying an insurance policy that would cover all of my cemetery and funeral home costs when I die. I'll have more than enough money for those expenses without the insurance money, but I like the idea of the kids knowing that there's money specifically earmarked for those costs so they don't have to worry about it. Is this a good purchase? This is why I love insurance, because it's all about death. (laughs) I would never want to be an insurance salesman for that reason. It's a very morbid topic. But I would say be very careful. A lot of times we're helping you actually get out of these insurance policies, because a lot of times, Bob, we find if you just invest your money, it's going to grow to be a lot more than that death benefit on the insurance policy, which is kind of crazy. Well, you know, let's face it, right? Uh, Insurance is a necessary evil, right? When you were young, your brother and sister... Uh, we're going to school and, you know, I had to have an income replacement policy that something happened to me. I mean, you can't, uh, you know, you can't predict what's going to happen in your life. So it's a necessary evil. But anything with an insurance company is not an investment. Let's be clear about that. It's a it's a contract. You're doing a contract with an insurance company and they're working for a fee. So anything where you can self-fund it, right, where you had the money to do it, you don't need to pay the middleman. Yeah. No, it's exactly right. And I think a good rule of thumb, it's not for everybody, but the older you get, you probably need less insurance. It's your point. It's when you're younger, when you have the mortgage, you have college tuitions coming up. That's when you really need it. So as you get closer to retirement and retired, that's a great time to reevaluate. Do I even need these policies anymore? Not adding on policies, which can be counterintuitive, actually. Yeah. And some of these policies can build up a good cash value, but they're not getting any type of return. And then the premium is eating away at it with unnecessary insurance. So let's be clear. You can have insurance that's necessary, and I call it a necessary evil. And then there's unnecessary insurance. And that's where you want to have a review done where you can look at the numbers and see if it makes sense to continue. All right. So thanks, Dan. They were great questions. And, um, you know, now I got a question for Ryan. On a scale of one to 10, you know, in terms of being financially organized, what would you give our, our emailers today in terms of a score? Yeah, I think Charles and Ruth, look, I think they're asking the right questions. They're th- they're thinking, do I need insurance, not need insurance? Charles thinking, I want a little bit. Now I need to run those numbers. So I'm going to give them both a hard five. Now they got to bring it home and have the numbers run and get that plan for financial independence, Bob. All right. So let me ask all of you a question. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, what score would you give yourself in terms of being financially organized? More importantly, what would your spouse give you? What would Ryan give you? Would Ryan give you a 10? Well, if you want to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next five callers and have saved at least 500000 for retirement because Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a financial GPS, just like the GPS in your car, which will tell you where you are financially, but more importantly, map out where you're going and report daily on your progress uh, of your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It will put your financial life in order and help you to avoid those financial potholes that, uh, you know, the financial media fails to tell you about. And more importantly, it'll track and monitor your daily net worth in real time 
So you'll always know where you are and more importantly, where you're going. Now, on top of that, what we'd like you to do is call right now, but before gather all those statements, they just came in for January, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag. Don't even, have, you don't have to open the envelopes. You have more than a few accounts, boy, best times to come right now. Right now, we'll take that information and break it down to a simple, easy to analyze portfolio analysis to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. We want to be certain that you are truly diversified, that you don't have all your eggs in one basket, that you're not overweighted in one asset class that can really harm you in the next bear market. We want to look at your income. Do you have the income you need to fill that gap in retirement? Hey, for those of you who are retired, all of my clients are just like you. They have one goal in life, one goal left, stay retired. That requires a dependable, repeatable income stream, regardless of what happens in the financial markets. And in addition, we're going to look at those nasty hidden costs. You know, I hate being overcharged, and I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. Yeah, Ryan talks about it all the time. There's lots of hidden costs out there. We know where they are. They're in plain sight. We're going to show you where to look. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. We're going to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades. Can you believe it? For over 45 years, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next five callers, we have five slots left. You have over $500,000 safe for retirement. We'll run for you our total financial master plan at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain financial radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you get the most common sense, practical advice every single week. That's why we put together our newest guide for 2020. We give you five new ways to save on taxes and we give you the rundown of the new Secure Act, which is a lot of new ways for you to save on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B U. L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year. And we give you the highlights from the Secure Act. There's new ways for you to save on taxes. You can check it out. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show. My colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, certified financial planner, Courtney C. Money Dominguez. That was a very, very aggressive intro. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'm very important. <laughs> hey, Ryan, I hate to tell you this. I was with a with a bunch of clients the other day, and I said, "Oh, by the way, I think Ryan's going to be on, you know, one of the financial shows next week." And they go. Oh, he's on. I always see Courtney. I never see Ryan. And so <laughs> well, evidently you're not memorable, stars. but Courtney, yeah. all my clients, they love yeah. seeing you on Fox Business, CNBC, Yahoo Finance. You're doing fabulous. I've been demoted to, I'm actually, well, I think it's promotion. I'm actually driving Courtney to all of her, uh, her, <laughs> her, her, her media appearances now. Soon enough, soon enough. <laughs> she sits in the back while I drive in the front, so I don't know if that's telling. I need Now I just need one of those caps. <laughs> well, this is our spotlight segment. Every week what we do is we take a real case that we worked on Mm -hmm. and we dissect it and we break out, you know, all the different things that this couple was doing right, wrong to help them with their path to financial freedom. So you worked on a case recently. Why don't you give us the rundown how you helped this couple get on their path to financial freedom? Yeah. And actually, Ryan, this is a case you and I worked on together just a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And I think it's a really important case to look at because this couple came to us and they said, well, we're really not looking to retire in the next couple of years. Right. But we're worried we might be kind of forced into it. And I hear this a lot where people are worried about maybe layoffs at their companies or just kind of unforeseen circumstances. And they want to make sure that their investments are set up properly. Do they have enough saved? Because even if you don't necessarily want to retire right away, they want to know they have the financial independence to do so if they want or have to. Yeah, and you know what? This is a good point because we'll get this 
answer a lot. Oh, I'm just going to work forever. Well, that's great. But what if you can't work? You know, you get downsized. What if you get sick? Unfortunately, something happens or a loved one gets sick and you can't work. Are you financially independent? And that's a question we all need to ask for ourselves. Ask well, yeah, there's no more powerful position to be in when you work for a company, which you may love or not love. But, you know, let's say someone comes in and you're not really crazy about and you have the financial independence. You know, something my buddies would call a big pile of go to hell money. I mean, that's not a bad place money, to Bob. be. <laughs> <laughs> so when you run the numbers... Were they in good shape, bad shape, or you know, where were they exactly? Yeah, so here's the good news about this couple is they've actually done a really good job of saving, and they are on track to be able to retire. However, their biggest pitfall that I looked at when I looked at their investments is they are really aggressive. They had about 80% of their money in the stock markets, which is about how aggressive I have somebody early on in their career, like in their 20s, not when you're in your early 60s thinking about retirement. And the reason that that is such an issue when I look at it immediately is because if there's some sort of big market correction, they could see a downside of 40 to 50% in their portfolio, which early on in your career is not necessarily a bad thing as you're adding money back in and compounding your money. Yeah. But when you are getting near a time where you need that money, you do not need that kind of risk. And that can put you at a lot more jeopardy of not being able to retire even though you've done all of this savings in the meantime. Yeah, no, no, it's a great point. We talk about that today. You know, the good news is if you sit with us, is you're probably in better shape than you thought financially mm -hmm. speaking. The bad news is your portfolio is probably not the portfolio you need and you're probably sitting on way more risk than you should be. And it's like, it's 11, 12 years later since we had the financial crisis, you can't afford to have the same volatility in your portfolio. Well, that's right. the beauty of it. We can't predict the future, but we certainly can model the past and we're able to show you exactly what if you know what if the market corrected 80 you know 50 to 60 percent like 2008 or 2009 what if you got downsized you know unexpectedly uh, you know what if you had four grandchildren i don't have any by the way um what if so you know you <laughs> have all this planning whether it's gifting retirement or just knowing and it takes you to the sleeping point don't you think court isn't that the way to go Exactly. Yeah. And I think it really just puts a lot of people at ease if they know that have they have the security of, I know I've saved enough. I've seen how the numbers look. But also I know that if there's a market correction, I have some safety built in there that it's not going to put me in jeopardy of having to go back to work or having to find another job if I don't want to. And so that's what we're able to provide. Um, you know, I sent, uh, I sent you guys an article the other day that talked about how active managers continue to underperform the stock market. And I noticed in this particular situation, they had all their money in mutual funds and all with one mutual fund company. I, I think mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big red flag. Exactly. Yeah, they had all of their eggs in very few baskets. It was with an active manager, to your point, which tends to be more expensive than you need and actually tends to underperform. And they're not as tax efficient. So there's a lot yeah. of really easy ways that we can take some risk off the table, spread it out for them, get lower cost investments and increase their cash flow. And it's just a few tweaks that's going to meet a lot of their financial goals. What do you mean? I love to pay more in fees, underperform the market and pay more in taxes. I mean, isn't that why a mutual fund's a great deal? <laughs> why would anyone own a mutual fund today? I just don't get it. All the <laughs> There's no reason to own mutual funds in your portfolio. And if an advisor it hasn't switched your portfolio out yet, like, get with the program. <laughs> oh, clearly, <laughs> clearly a mutual fund company is not a fiduciary because if you're a fiduciary, you got to find the best solution, the least expensive solution. And I can't imagine there happens to be one mutual fund company that has the best solution for every part of your portfolio. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Exactly. So I really think when couples come to us and they want to meet their financial goals, making sure we get them out of those mutual funds, getting them into lower cost yeah. options, increasing their cash flow, which was also important for this couple because right now they're not getting a lot of income on those mutual funds that they own, where we can switch them into a portfolio that gets yeah. them higher interest and dividends and actually meets their income gap. So they don't have to sell anything if they don't want to. They can live off of the income, which adds a lot more certainty that if they need to retire here in the near future, they know they can. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the peace of mind that you need. And great job on this, Courtney, as Bob likes to say, another financial masterpiece. Thank well you. done. Maybe the fact I helped. I actually, I just, I was just the assistant in this case as well. <laughs> Story I think of my you life. were just the eye candy, Rye. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of review I need. I just want to know that I'm financial. I can be financially independent. I want to know the risk I have in my portfolio. I want to make sure that I have enough income when I retire, or if I'm retired now. Here's your shot to do it. We literally have three slots left. If you give us a call or text right now, myself, Bob, Courtney, C Money Dominguez, we'll run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's just a full holistic review just like this. All you need to do is bring those statements in, bring them in from January, print them out, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that information and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal. And then we're going to do it just like we did here. We're going to get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life. Then we can start making some good decisions. We're going to look at everything from income. Income so critical in retirement. What is your income plan? Let's show you how we can optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at diversification. This couple was taking way more risk than they needed to. What kind of risk are you taking in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you exactly where your risk is and how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at taxes and we're going to look at fees. This couple had a lot of these high-cost mutual funds that were just completely unnecessary to own. What high-cost things do you have in your portfolio that we can help you reduce cost on and then optimize the portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket? And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies now our family's been working on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next three callers, we only have three spots left, and you saved over $500,000 for retirement, we have C-Money, Courtney, Dominguez, Rye, and Bob will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. No strings attached. There's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Well, another great show. Court, as always, great to have you. Thanks for having me, as always. You're like the guiding light. <laughs> always, always in a good mood. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> do my best. <laughs> Big Bob, always a pleasure, my man. I feel like a third wheel here today, Rye. I think uh, you know it should be the Rye and, and, and Courtney show. I mean, she would just outshine me, and then I have to get another job. I'm already driving around the city now for <laughs> media appearances. Like It's only going to go downhill from there. Well, have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish.